refugees. You have to take them all in now from Micronesia, wherever. Then they all come here. Guess who gets, guess who gets to take care of all the refugees and resettles them? You got it. The church. Church gets the money. So it's all got to do with money and the story. Follow the dollar, period. You got that? Okay. That was a long, a long thing. 855-407-282, Michael Savage. I may be pugnacious and opinionated, yes. But no one can deny my elegance and intellectual fastidiousness. No one. Unless they themselves are just failures who hate anybody who's smarter than them. What are we going to talk about? Oh, we got a winner. We got a winner. Sue on WMAL. Go ahead, please. What are you calling about? I was calling about the poem, and it was written by A.E. Hausman. How in the world could you know that this little couplet, I'm going to read it again. The stars have not dealt me the worst they could do. My pleasures are plenty, my troubles are too. But oh, my two troubles, they reave me of rest. The brain's in my head and the heart in my breast. Oh, grant me the ease that is granted so free. The birthright of multitudes, give it to me. That relish their victuals and rest on their bed. With flint in the bosom and guts in the head. How did you know it was Hausman? That's an obscure couplet. How? Well, I was an English major in college. And I was driving to the gym when you were reading it. And I remember the line, my troubles are two. And he must have spent a whole period talking about the significance of that line. And I never forgot it. You're one of the few Americans left who knows what a poem is. Uh, I'm going to send you, a minute it's out, it'll be out in about a month, actually, another month and a half, no less. But we're starting today, Countdown. You're getting a free copy of my great book, Government Zero, my last nonfiction book, my nonfiction political book, when it's out in October. And God bless you for knowing Western civilization's poems, because Hausman has always been one of my favorite, especially a Shropshire lad to an athlete dying young. I'll be right back. It's the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Hey, Huey Lewis, I like, up to a point. Where is he today? I, I don't know, whatever. Here we are in the Savage Nation. I can't believe, how could we go through an hour? John from WJR will talk with you. He says the Pope should be allowed to come and speak. I say no, the Pope should go, go back where he came from. As an American who believes in the separation of church and state, no. No, Mr. Pope. Go home and spew your lies to the ignoramuses out of the Vatican. You think this is too harsh? Wait till he's here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282, SAVAGE. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I, I, 80s were not my favorite. Horrible time, my life. What the government did to me. Play it up for a minute. They're not interested in anything I have to say anyway. And now we have a big one from the 80s, ZZ Top on The Savage Nation. That's all. Why talk about politics? The effect it has. Okay, turn it off now. What's the point of talking about politics? We elected these schmuck Republicans. Look what we got, a drunk. A drunk in charge, a stooge of Obama called Boehner. If Obama tells him to come in and, and, and wash his clothes, he would do it for him. Some separation of powers we have here. And the sellouts in the Supreme Court. Look at them, what they must have over that guy, Roberts. I'd like to see those pictures. To share those pictures on the Internet. The votes we get out of him with that judge in Kentucky. I'd like to see the file they have on that judge. The, the, the little portfolio, the 52 cards. Now we got the Pope to deal with. Now it wasn't bad enough we have sellout politicians. Now we got a, a, a Pope, a communist Pope. Straight out communist Pope. Don't mince words already. Why must everybody dance on eggs when you say the Pope? Why? There's, by the way, a revolution going on inside the church over what this guy is doing. 
a revolution is brewing of, of conservative leaders are freaked out over this communist. They finally see it. What, what anyone with a brain could see from the, from the get-go, this guy is espousing. The Pope of the Catholic Church is espousing opinions that are very, very similar to that of Jeremiah Wright, Barack Obama's preacher, who said, you know, you know what he said, right? Remember that? The Pope is Jeremiah Wright with a smoother act, the same way that Obama is Al Sharpton with a smoother act. It's all revolutionary communism, or as you call it, liberation theology, whichever way you want to put it. And I don't like it, nor should you. Asylum seekers spread west and north, says the LA Times. The Pope urges every parish in Europe to take in one family as the arriving migrants disperse in Germany. Don't get me started on Merkel. Merkel is the biggest sellout in the history of the German nation. This woman started out as another one who faked conservatism and now became the most psycho leftist you could ever imagine. Amid one of the greatest human displacements since World War II. Blah, blah, blah. So let's talk about the displacement that's going on and who caused it. Hillary Clinton. You want to know where this displacement came from? Hillary Clinton. Why do I say that? First of all, I was the first to say it in the media. Now I see it dribbling out in drips and drabs. The second and third rate intellectuals are already picking it up. Hillary Clinton espoused the uh, Arab Spring lie. Now let me go back on that one. George Soros funded it. Zbigniew Brzezinski designed it. Hillary Clinton enacted it. She broke Libya, threw out Gaddafi. What happened? Went after Assad. What happened? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Do you get the picture, the bigger picture, the global picture? The most unmitigated disaster in modern history is what's going on in the Middle East as a result of Hillary Clinton's Arab Spring. And it never comes up. Say what you will about the Republican debates. They're vigorous. They're intellectually honest. They're diverse in opinion. They disagree with each other. They call each other names. While she gets away with virtual murder. Not a word. Anyone asks that woman a word. Like Mrs. Clinton. You take any, do you take any responsibility for the uh, migration crisis in Europe as a result of the Arab Spring? Why don't you ask her that question? That, that two-faced phony that's going to, you know, none of them will ask her a question because they can't find her. It's like find the candidate hidden behind the witch from Florida. That a piece of work. That is Debbie Schultz Wasserwoman. Wow. I fled New York because of women like her. Women like Debbie Schultz Wasserman, Wasserwoman. There's a reason I fled New York and wound up in the jungles of the South Seas collecting plants to never hear their voices again. A shrike? That protects her now. So Pope's coming. I don't mind if he mumbo-jumbos about religion, but first, even that, I don't know what he's doing in a Congress doing that for. What was he doing there? And he's going to talk about global warming again. That's what's getting me mad. It's a lie, number one. And number two, where's the refutation? You know, normally when a president gives a speech, it's like an, you know, a speech from the opposition. You know, State of the Union. Okay, State of the Union. Take the State of the Union. The president gives a State of the Union address, and then the, the head of the opposition party, in this case, if he's not drunk, they can find him in the cloakroom, not on the floor, underneath a, a coat, gives a speech refuting it. They get the, the, the stew bum up to give a speech. They stand them up. That's, that's, that's the tradition. So if the Pope is going to give a speech to Congress, why don't they let someone refute his lies? Right afterwards, here's the refutation of, of Mr. Pope. And secondly, who is the Pope? Why is he elevated to Godhead? Can I calm down with you for a minute? Who is this man? If I'm not mistaken, he started as a bouncer. Then he realized there's no money in it. So he went into religion. It reminds me of the novel, The Red and the Black. See, I would say if anyone gets that right, I'll give you a free copy of Government Zero, but you could look that one up. That's too easy. I'll give you the answer. Stendhal, S-T-E-N-D-A-H-L, French writer, The Red and the Black. And what, what that was about, great novel, I read it in college. Now they're teaching Jenny has three mommies in 14 countries. I read Stendhal, and he wrote The Red and the Black, and it was the, the story of one young man who's poor, peasant, no chance to get ahead in France at that time except to go into the army, the military, or the church, red and the black. Those are the only two paths to success, the red and the black. And it's about his rise and the, the politi politicking he had to do to rise. 
I think he did go into the priesthood. So the Pope realizes there's no money in, in uh, bartending, puts on the collar, and next thing you know, he's a good politician, bingo, like Obama. It's all politics. How did he become Pope? What, God come down somewhere that I don't know about and say, pick this guy from, uh, from Argentina because he's so brilliant and so pure? He's a man. I don't understand this part of religion. Why do people elevate religious people to some non-human state? I don't get that. I guess that's called sainthood or canonization, whatever. I don't, I'm not into that. I don't believe in saints and I don't believe in canonization of people. You know, we're all the same at the end of the day. Some good, some bad, some stupid, some smart. That's all. But the end, what is this? Why is this guy being given such a, an audience? Because it fits in with Obama's agenda and the Republicans' agenda, which is to, you know, bamboozle you with more of the big lie. Now we're going to hear about the refugee crisis. Take him in. Yeah, bleeding hearts again. Take it a Muslim. Take a Muslim in for Jesus. That'll be the, 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 uh, the doctrine. If you love Jesus, we'll have you put a Muslim family in your house. Build a little mosque in your bedroom for a refugee family, says the Pope. I mean, I'm, I don't know what he's going to say. You love Jesus, yeah, take it in a Muslim family from Syria. Don't bring in any Christian families. And Mr. Pope, don't talk about the burning of the churches by the Muslims. Don't talk about the killing of Christians by the Muslims. Don't say a word about that. Just talk about mumbo-jumbo, everybody, about global warming and rising seas and, uh, you know, taking a family. Take a family in for Jesus. See, that's the undertone. That's it. It's the whole thing right now. Okay, I have scorn for this. I don't like lies. I'm appalled by the lies. So I use appalling sarcasm to fight the liars. And the scorn they have for the people is so great, I use unmitigated scorn to skewer them with my sarcasm. That's all. I may be pugnacious, I may be opinionated, but no one can argue with my elegance and intellectual fastidiousness, which is why the show is so big. Oh, you could say what you will, but big it is. That is right. So I'd like to refute the Pope. I'd even do it on a call-in basis after he gives a speech. And now we hear from America's most brilliant talk show host, Michael Savage, refuting the Pope. I would not be insulting. I take his arguments down one by one and give you an alternate viewpoint. What would be wrong with that? Nothing. But you're not going to hear that. And now, ladies and gentlemen, just direct from San Francisco, Michael Savage. Yeah, I renamed the city as I came back. San Francisco. Thanks to Sheriff Murky Kami. Kate, Kate uh, Steinle is dead. Released it from jail. Nothing happened to him, though. It's a new name for the city. I used a few other affectionate names. San Francisco doesn't work anymore. But San Francisco is liable to fit. Would you believe that in your lifetime it would go from being compassionate to so-called bums in the street who they gave a new name homeless? What do you mean Homeless. Guys are bummies in the gutter. In the old days, if you couldn't afford to live in a, in a city, you moved to a country, out into the into where no one wanted to live. You did like odd jobs. You lived in a barn. You did the best you could. You wandered. You were a drifter. No one gave you a home. Where'd that come from? Again, Marxism. Homeless. Homelessness. Would you believe you go from being compassionate to the homeless to having them openly defecate in the street, pulling their pants down, urinating in front of people in the streets? And the city fathers do nothing. <laughs> city fathers. The city freakos. City fathers. They're so busy raking in the money, they could care less. Railways to nowhere down the Central Valley. They'll take people from A to B and no one will be on the train. Meanwhile, people have made fortunes that you can't believe. Intergenerational fortunes are being made in California right now on a phony railroad put in by Governor, Governor B. But he's interested in global warming. That's all. I'm on a roll today. I can feel that, but... I don't know if I want to take a call yet. I will when I come back, I promise. I'm starting to feel like I... I it took me an hour to get here because I knew you weren't ready. Topics I covered in hour one were good. L.A. trip, motor mouth girl, movie star of unnamed, uh, iconic movie star with a strong man, French clocks, food in the Italian restaurant that tastes like Italian food. At least it tastes like Italian food. I'm saying it wasn't as good as last time, but at least it tasted like Italian food. It has to have a certain smack to it, the sauce. Marinara sauce should smack of the sea. should be bland. It's like American Chardonnay. They made it sugary so women would drink it. It's based on a Sauvignon Blanc, which is based on a Sancerre. It's supposed to be tart. 
but because the children in America